Hi everyone, I am Jane and I am teaching at College Tingkatan Enam, Tun Fatima in Malacca. I am teaching wet at the college. Now, today in this lesson, we will be looking at some writing skills which is pertinent in your wet exam. Now, some of the writing aspects that we will be looking at in this lesson today is firstly topics in the writing task will be related to academic and educational background now it won't be anything different from what you normally know it will definitely include familiar to unfamiliar topics in different academic areas in which even if you are not an expert in that area, you will still be able to answer it. So, secondly, you will also need to draw on your knowledge and understanding of the real world settings. This includes knowledge of the latest happenings in the country and the world. Thirdly, is the writing knowledge. Now, this includes vocabulary, morphology, syntax, grammar, spelling, and also cohesion. Now, pragmatic knowledge for writing paper will come in useful, like knowing the functions, dialect, register, naturalness, cultural references, and figures of speech. Now, um, lastly, you also need to know that in the writing paper, processing ability is important. This is where you need to be able to gather ideas. You need to know the genre, the, uh, your target readership, and identifying the relationship between reader and writer. Now, you should also know that each paragraph in your writing need to be aligned to the goal of the essay. Now, with this, I believe you will be ready to write well in the exam. In the MUET writing paper, there are two tasks which you will need to accomplish. Now, the first task is where you will be given a textual stimulus. This could either be in the form of an email or it could also be a letter. You are advised to write a response to it in about 25 minutes of about 100 words minimum. You could write more within that 25 minutes. Well, the second task in the writing exam would require you to write an essay expressing your opinions or to give reasons and justification based on the textual stimulus given. Now, for task two, you are advised to spend about 50 minutes with at least 250 words. You could write more if you want. Now, let us look at ex an example of the first individual task in your word writing paper. Topics in the email or letter will include common issues related to students' lives. Now, let us take a look at the first task given in the MWET CEFR aligned paper. Our first example, if you could refer to visual one, is about Amani, who had missed an English language camp carried out by his school. Now, he had missed out due to some reasons that's unknown to us, 
which is not stated in his email. Now you need to create a reason in your reply as to his failure to participate in the camp. Now, in his email to you, he would have asked you a number of questions. These questions asked in his email must be replied to in your letter to Armani. Now, could you spend one minute reading Armani's email to you? Based on the assumption that you are Armani's schoolmate who had attended the camp, you are now to write a reply to Armani. Now, in your reply letter to him, you ask to answer all the questions that he has asked you. Remember to start by asking about him and his condition now, and then express your disappointment as to his absence during the camp. Now, you may, there are a number of things that you may need to include in the email. You will definitely need to reply to Amani's sequence of questions asked in his email. There would probably be three or four questions in the email or the letter. Then you write a sign off followed by your name in the next line. So you sign and you have your name underneath. Now this is a sample of a possible reply that you sent to Amani. Now do spend a few minutes reading this reply email to Amani in order to give you an idea of what the reply email would look like. If you study it closely, you will find that I have started the email with a number of things. Now the first is a general greetings. I've also answered all the questions asked from the e incoming email without disrupting the flow of my email to him. And then I sign off appropriately. Either you can write regards and your name, or you can put your sincerely, that would be your choice. Now let us try writing another email for task one in our MUET writing. Refer to visual three. Now do spend two minutes reading the email. Once you have read and understood the content of this email, you are going to reply to Lakshman's email. Now first, as I have explained earlier, you need to understand that Lakshman wrote to his sister Shalini to find out more about her road trip to Malacca with their parents. Now, Lakshman in his letter was unable to go with Shalini because most probably he was in the university. You could make up whatever reasons. Now, he asked his sister four questions and these questions have to be answered in your reply email. Now, the questions he asked were, did Shalini enjoy the road trip? Now, which place in Malacca was his sister's favourite? What was his sister's most favourite dish and where? And if, lastly, the question he asked was, if their dad is planning another road trip soon? Now, once you have understood the content of the email and the questions asked, so you are now ready to write the reply email to Lakshman. So, what, what are the things that you need to do? You need to spend 25 minutes. You are advised to spend 25 minutes for your first task in the web writing exam. If you take more, it will be at the expense of your task too. Now, read this given uh, sample answer in Visual 4. The reply email to Lakshman consists of the following. As I have mentioned earlier, 
you got to start your email with a general greeting to his to her brother and she will need to answer all the four questions that her brother had asked her and you need to sign off and write your name now these are the four aspects that you must have in your reply email once you have done that check for mechanics of writing like your punctuations the usage of capital or small letters do check your spelling and also make sure your sentences are all grammatical now after doing all the above you are now ready to submit your email for task 1 comparatively writing tasks in this new format is much easier than the old format in the old format you would have to write your rep a report writing so in 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 your C smart cfr align is email so i'm sure you will will try very hard to score in this task in particular in task 1 writing i could only foresee students who will not be able to score will be due to a number of problems like um not having um appropriate vocabulary you do not know how to express yourself you do not know the words to use to answer the questions asked wrong use of tenses poor spelling unable to maintain the flow of the email through appropriate sequence connectors other than this candidates should be able to score well in the exam you only need to write in about 100 words All right. Now, since that you are clear about task 1, we will move to the second task in your writing paper. Now, what does this second task in the writing paper? You would need you are required to write an essay of about 250 words based on a given statement. The statement or the situation given may require you to discuss over a wide range of topics. Now, it may be of argumentative nature or one which requires problem solution kind of writing. Now, unlike the first task here, candidates are expected to provide responses ranging from B1 to C1. Of course the expectation in task 2 is 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 a bit higher than the first task. First task you are required to have A2 to C1. So in this task task 2 you can afford to write longer 250 words minimum and therefore you will be able to show off your ability. Now the opposite may also happen. whereby if you do not have the words you will have difficulty expressing your ideas and opinions as such the key to do well in task 2 is definitely to increase your reading of english language materials now it goes without saying that the more words that you know you will be able to write and express your thoughts well with the more words you know you will be able to write your thoughts clearly and precisely now let us practice task 2 writing look at visual 5 now you are given 2 minutes to read the question here in task 2 you will write an essay to express your opinion It is always about expressing opinion in task 2. In about 250 words, which is not very long, you are expected to write your opinions with the following in mind: a high degree of accuracy and in an appropriate and effective style. You are after all a pre-university student. Now, the essay written must also be in an 
orderly and logical manner, which will help the reader to follow your line of thoughts. You will also need to expand and support your views with relevant points, re points, reasons and examples. I believe if you can do this, you will be able to score in task 2. Now with all the criteria I have mentioned, I suggest you write your essay based on 5 paragraphs only. This is for task 2. To answer your second question in five paragraphs. In your respective paragraph, the first paragraph is to pick out keywords from the statement given. From the question given, you pick out the keywords. Now, then you explain those keywords based on your own understanding. You, have, you need to also state your stand as to whether you totally agree, disagree, or partially agree. Now, these are the three stands that you could take. In your, sec in your second paragraph, the first reason, you state your first reason of argument. In, your, in other words, you must give your reason as to why you agree or disagree or partially agree with the statement given. You start off with a topic sentence. Your second paragraph, you start off with a topic sentence followed by elaboration and examples. Now, you repeat the same style of writing in, for the next two paragraphs in your essay. The third paragraph is also the same. Third paragraph, you will be giving your second reason of argument. In other words, your second reason to either to agree, disagree, or partially agree. It has to be consistent with your thesis statement in the first paragraph. Now, so you will have your, as usual, in this paragraph, you will also need to have your topic sentence, elaboration, examples. You will not go wrong if you do this. The fourth paragraph is your third reason of argument. In other words, your third reason, again, to show your agreement, disagreement, or partially agree. Again, like I said, for the second, third and fourth, each paragraph, you will have your topic sentence, elaboration and examples. Now, topic sentence, what are topic sentence? Now, topic sentence in each paragraph tells us, tells your reader the idea, the key idea of the whole paragraph, of that one particular paragraph. So remember to use only one idea in one paragraph. Through the topic sentence, you are guided in your writing so that you would not write about something else. It will guide you. So based on the topic sentence that you have written, you will elaborate on your topic sentence with further elaboration and examples to strengthen your argument or to show why you have chosen a particular stand. Now repeat the same method for paragraph 3 and paragraph 4. And lastly, the fifth paragraph. Now, this is your concluding paragraph. You reinstate your stamp as what you have mentioned in the first paragraph. Your stand on the subject matter. And perhaps you could even suggest ways on how things can be improved based on the given context. Now, in this concluding paragraph, ask yourself, so what now? Ask yourself, always ask yourself, so what? That will trigger ideas in your head and it will give you ideas, more, more ideas to write, more arguments to give. So it'll make your, your essay more substantial. It has more substance. Again, like in other writings, in any writings, once you have written your five paragraph, your job is not done. You've got to go through your essay and do check for tenses, spelling, punctuations, and also logical connectors. Logical connectors, the, the use of good logical connectors will ensure the flow of ideas in 
your essay. Now refer to Visual 6 for an overall organization of your essay. Now, students, do remember that your writing can only be clear. Your writing, your essay will only be clear if you yourself are clear in your head of the subject matter. If you are not clear, your writing will not be clear. So write drafts, drafts which consist of keywords before writing them in full sentences. I strongly believe when we are clear of the subject matter in our heads, as what we feel and think about the subject matter. The subject matter will be the statement given, the task that you have to answer, then chances are our arguments will also be convincing and clear. Now, in short, I feel assessment of the essay will include task fulfillment. Task fulfillment here means have you answered the questions asked? You must know what you are writing, what you are answering. You got to respond appropriately with clear stand, consistent tone, and development of ideas need to be clear, supported, and convincing. Now, a presentation of ideas in your essay need to be smooth and well linked. And since you are pre-university level, you got to show maturity of thoughts in your essay. Check for your language, make sure tenses are consistent. Use low frequency words, words which is not common. Look, make sure your tenses and your spelling is correct and if, with effective sequence markers. Try to vary your vocabulary and your sentences. Now, and make sure the flow from one paragraph to another is cohesive. And this will ensure a smooth reading of your readers. To recap your three well-developed points, you, you must consist of three topic sentences, three ideas, three topic sentences, which means three topic sentences, relevant elaborations and examples. Also remember, it is very important not to do that kind of touch and go kind of points or arguing irrelevant matters. If it's not answering not relevant to the context given, do not talk about them. So, now that you have been given a clear description of what is required from you in the writing test and how to go about answering the two tasks in the test, I am sure you are now more confident and more able. At least the general idea, you should, you should get the general idea by now. Okay, so can you tell me what are some of the important features that you need to remember in order to do well in your word writing task. Now, um, so what are some of the do's and don'ts? What are the things that you should do in your writing? And what are the things that you shouldn't do? Now, for your own practice with your teachers, you can try this question. Now, refer visual seven and eight for task one and task two. These are practice that you can do with your teachers. So now, students, before I say goodbye, I would like to remind you the importance of reading. Please read widely in order to enable you to keep abreast with current issues and also to improve your English language, to improve your writing. No shortcut, you got to read. The more you read, the better your reading, your writing skills will be. It's not, it's not by having more writing practices. No, read. Because through reading, you have that sufficient input. Reading extensively, which is in the form when you read, is in an input to your head. And as output, you'll be able to write well. So remember, in order to write well, you got to read first. Thank you so much 
and all the best. <laughs>